Which appliance in your kitchen is the best kept meal prep secret? Probably your freezer and here's why. When you come home after a long day of work, you're tired, you're hungry and you open the fridge and there's nothing inside, the first thing that's gonna come to mind is what am I gonna make for dinner? Sometimes you just need a really fast meal that you can throw together in five to 10 minutes because you're tired, you're hungry and if you don't eat right now, the world is going to end or sometimes it feels like that. So today I'm gonna share some of my favorite meals that you can make in a pinch out of freezer ingredients all in like 10 minutes or less. So really any kind of all-purpose frozen veggie blend will work most of the time. I really like this stir fry blend from Costco. This is obviously really good for stir fries, but also for soup, which is what we're gonna start with. So I usually do everything on the stove top because I find that it doesn't really take that much more time than using the microwave. And I just find it's easier to combine everything into a pot on the stove. But if you wanted to do the microwave, you probably could. Usually when I make soup, I use this better than bouillon broth paste. And that is because it is less expensive than buying a bunch of boxes of veggie broth. And it's also less waste. But if you don't have this available, you can just buy the regular boxed veggie broth from the store, or even like those veggie bouillon cubes, those are basically the same. This is the best freezer protein because just like the frozen veggies, you don't need to defrost it. You can just add it straight into your soups or stir fries. And it's about nine grams of protein for half a cup of edamame. So our soup is basically finished at this point. You're really just waiting for the veggies to not be frozen in the middle anymore. So go ahead and give them a taste. And once they're heated all the way through, your soup can be done. But let's talk seasonings real quick because if you leave it as is, it might be a little bit boring, which is fine, but there are a few super easy ways to jazz it up. My favorite basic combination is gonna be something like a vegan chicken broth where I would use nutritional yeast, maybe some dried thyme or rosemary if I have it, garlic powder, onion powder, and of course, salt and pepper. Or like any combo of those, of course, you don't have to use them all if you don't have them. And then for a really basic Asian inspired broth, I will use, of course, something like soy sauce, maybe about a tablespoon or so of this, a little bit of rice vinegar, maybe about a teaspoon or so. And then if you're not avoiding oil, you can add something like sesame oil. Even just the smallest amount of this adds a lot of flavor. I mean, a really small amount. We're talking like a quarter teaspoon for the whole pot. It doesn't really add a lot of calories, but it does add a lot of flavor. So this is an option, or there's something like these store-bought chili oils, or you could just add plain chili flakes if you wanted to completely avoid the oil, but this does add a really nice spice. So I will add like a very tiny amount on occasion. Now you could add some kind of a grain here. You could cook up some tiny pasta shells or some orzo or some rice noodles. I've even seen frozen bags of brown rice or white rice. If you wanted to keep this a completely freezer friendly meal, you could add one of those in there. But I do happen to have some batch cooked rice already. So of course I'm gonna add that. And next we're going to use the same stir fry mix for an actual stir fry. Now you could add some tofu or tempeh here if you wanted, or even the edamame from our first recipe, but I'm just gonna keep it very simple and just do the veggies and serve it with our batch cooked rice. Lastly, we are going to make some tacos because I do have some corn tortillas to use up in the fridge. But if you don't have those, you could always make a burrito with some flour tortillas or even just a burrito bowl with like some rice at the base. And again, you can always just use frozen rice if you don't have any prepped. I do like to add a crunchy component to these tacos, but if you don't have these toppings, feel free to leave them out or change them up. You could do some chopped romaine, you could do a finely chopped kale, or even some finely diced onion.
So next time you have nothing in the fridge, I hope you at least have something in the freezer so that you can throw together one of these super fast and easy meals. If you did enjoy this video or found it helpful at all, don't forget to hit the like button down below. And with that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Let's eat plants and I will see you guys next time.